Hello, Lucky Cats. Lucky Kyo back with Doki Doki. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem! Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. Th that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's all fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. I think that's a quickly. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! It's called After Marriage of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as he starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sh the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. She's, suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she bewildered even herself. Hi. It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she de deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we apply, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Hmm. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the po podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Uh -huh. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're resetting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was a, was made as a perfect match. <coughs> the poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she liked my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Maya liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. 
but it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? Uh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? <laughs> Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Maya. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Maya lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else is. Don't worry about it much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll prove over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly sets out of, gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. This poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. Does it surprise Natsuki? I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, we won't have to worry much about the fest. We don't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time uh, what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. 
then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Eh <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must, must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking... I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well, I would walk home with Yuri. Walking ho uh, home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean... Given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it! Jeez. There's no... There's not even any point in speculating something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm, if you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? <coughs> oh boy, poem time! Organizing by Brent. Fulgent Misfortune After Image Massacre Ambient Tenacious one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. 
Remember that the club won't be here if it wasn't for all four of you. And I'm super happy that you're willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid, you of all people? Eh? I didn't say it like that. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Ica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Hmm? Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own events for now, okay? Eh? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's, anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori, anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting in a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little... off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well... All right, if you say so. I wordingly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. S since they've been preparing for the festival, they must have they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through some papers at her desk. Maya! What's up? <coughs> hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? I mean, I'm re Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised that I'm not the one asking you, Maya. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She always, She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your pro- Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she's just having a hard time bringing up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? She means it's about you. I'm saying that maybe if the thing on her mind is you, Maya. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well... I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? 
She's been so much happier ever since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. Is that any different than it always has been? Uh huh. You're so funny, Maya. Have you thought that maybe you're always, you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Mm. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. Alright. Marka smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that it won't be that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice quiet so I can't hear her from here. I sigh and set myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her? Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now that it feels I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I know it's Siri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I never really see Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one next to her own. I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that's what I was think that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it isn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are the only cons <coughs> are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Ah, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if it if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Eh? S sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Maya, oh, the world is full of meaning, often hidden beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah, so you think that there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what they may be going on what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, 
I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, uh, I... I guess? But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Mm. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I invert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't, a weren't aware were in you. Th that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. So, I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not necessarily as sophisticated as you. Ah, uh, uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Well, now would be a perfect time to find out. Hi, Maya. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Hmm. Your style has... Your style's gotten so refined, Maya. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple of days than she's talked in the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm. Yeah, actually, actually putting... You're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Eh? That's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day? Reading that edgy novel with her? Well... I just... Feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the, the novel isn't too bad either, you know? Alright, alright. I get you. Just... Be careful, alright? I know Yuri isn't used to opening herself up, so if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books, her books are an, a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I really, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale of a lady who wanders earth. The lady knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather lost adrift in the sky of the currents of the wind day after day I search 
I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall, and fall, and fall even more, even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a ho hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that I wrote about. So that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. And it, in any way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, we wouldn't... Wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like... It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good all the time? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. You're so right. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, I want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's so much more encouraging that way and will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Say hi! Hmm. hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably, Yuri. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good! That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Maya. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. Uh huh. Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You could go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the club room, humming to herself. Natsuki! Yeah, no thanks. Eh? 
You didn't even... Next. Jeez, no one likes me. Maya, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has been nothing sore, short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Maya, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? I had a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Maya. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I could do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you. That I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Maya. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me like, just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success, wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ghost Under the Light, Part 2. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. In the distance, a blue-green light flickers. A lone figure crosses its path, a silhouette obstructing the eerie glow. My heart pounds. The silhouette grows closer, closer, 
I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from invisibility. But I am too late. He steps into the street light. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only di- indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me for succumbing to this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warm before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Ah, no, of course not. I just don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. Also, this clearly isn't the poem Nazuki said she wrote about. Meaning I'm probably the only one she's showing this to. I I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. Mm. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her. But instead, Yuri gently takes my hand and pushes them back to me. I hesitate in response to our warm touch. You can. Um, the poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles, as if she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but... I hope that... I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah. I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. <laughs> Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pay. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, actually she wasn't feeling too well and went home early. I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all times to not go home with her, you pick the time when she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. 
I no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. <gasps> that curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's just decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. So Yuri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Um... Mm? Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm usually useless. No! That's not it at all! You're the most talented person here, you know? Hmm. Now Natsuki's pouting, too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri! But anyway, that just leaves you, Maya. The one who is truly useless. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You can always help me out as well. I would really be appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give a choice, give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anywhere. That's okay. He tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Maya may not like to be around you if, I, uh, if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, you may be more suited with assisting with, to assisting with the decorations. Hold on! I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Maya to... What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys! Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, it's up to Maya to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides... He hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... Uh, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Maya, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going to go with Yuri. Well, I'll 
probably be most useful helping out Eerie. Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Not Suki. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no. I was just saying that. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Maya? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is there... Is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be, may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Maya? Me? Ah, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how I'll turn it, it'll turn out. That's good enough for me! What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki? What? Why is ev- Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, uh, Yuri anxiously, anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Maya pi picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really go well with my tea. And nothing that I do for that event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I, I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer, cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I began to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realized that I don't have a way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then, Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way. So I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. 
I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Maya. I think that will go... That will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? Hmm. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. B but Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you were overthinking, right? Eh? Uh -huh. I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks h really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous elf effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this! Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me she was looking forward to it. Is this a chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait! It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself that there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit, open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club the other day. But it's not like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I, s I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made a habit of simply entering each other's house like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Maya. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. 
I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Are you aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Maya. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. So you wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this... It's just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. Uh -huh. Sayori? I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So just tell me already. Until now, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Until I know. I won't stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh -huh. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Maya. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Maya? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I have... I've had really de bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Does she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Maya. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. 
I don't want to be cared about. It's very sweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then, I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Maya. There's nothing. Nothing at all. That's the, the only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, Maya, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. Even if I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Maya, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She start, starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Maya, I... Sayori ba barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad at you if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Maya. The only time I'm not, f I I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. <coughs> uh, excuse me. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um. Uh. It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to come meet me- To meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. 
I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I, wouldn't, I shouldn't be worrying up too much. And we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I approach my house. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a li you're a little early. I'm sorry, I wasn't home. I'm sorry, I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. Did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. Ooh. <laughs> the first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no. I would have been really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look at there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned out that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to our faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's just something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some chopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in a black paper and use these candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? 
is one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion on anything. Mary smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well... Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. Then what are we going to use it for? What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred- A HUNDRED! Oh yeah? What will these be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative! I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more uh, relaxed when it's just the two of us? It might also just be the Jasmine. Or maybe it's like excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Or it's the Jasmine. Here's a marker, Maya. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Huh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is tinted, gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're... You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get a, you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. 
Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool look looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Maya, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can go through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a close look. Ah. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah-ah! Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh. P please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. That's the most... That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh. Sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I kind of liked it. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. <sighs> she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of this of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Maya! D did you really just do that? N now we're even. Yuri looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would have been a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Maya. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah. I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. Which is... We each resume our respective activities. Sherry's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be uh, very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thing you, you good thing in coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What did you have? Do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy uh, buy the print ta paint tablets. Oh, that's right. One of the items Yuri has as had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put 
each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill up the uh, cups too much, it will be too diluted. Then why do we need six? Why not, like, three of fully... Of full cups and only use a little bit at a time. Taking years of ice, I use a small plastic. I use the small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint drips and bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes. I come to see Qu Yuri quickly ro unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah. Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dro dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we should do something simple that would look very nice. I would like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, we will write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite ends so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different color across the banner to serve as a guide to where we paint. This kind of, uh, kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself, For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like creating, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah. Sorry. Yuri wheels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. I return my to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. Hang on, my dog wants back in.
I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the, the towel. <sighs> Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer? Feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half slipping, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me the, this dizzy feeling? Yuri, Yuri gently, Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingled sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. <sighs> Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It, it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it begun. Yuri picks up her brush again. Her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, focus, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah. Me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, not yet. It needs to try first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here. Then I'll be bringing it in in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case... I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Flew! Uh-huh. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you are at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time to finish after finishing the work. Well? Well? Yuri thinks to herself. I, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is we that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean that this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say it without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Ah, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over th over my words, Yuri simply smiled specially. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, man. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you.
well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Say, Hori? Eh? Ah. Hi, Ma. Sayori. Just now, we weren't. Uh -huh. It's okay, Ma. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, uh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll be on together at the festival. I'll, we'll, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Y yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh -huh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come see it for myself. See what? <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. A tear starts to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Maya? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Maya. If I was near, you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Maya. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Maya, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori, you'll always be my dearest friend. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but... Please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I... I see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. 
<laughs> Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori. It's okay. This is just my punishment. Remember? For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time. That there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just want to go want it to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone I. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So Sayori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. Touching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feel feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The more I can... The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know that these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend, and I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. <coughs> <coughs> it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and, gent and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough... I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I feel more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Maya! You're the first one here! Thanks for being early! That's funny. I thought... I, uh, that's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Uh-huh. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Maya. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. How do you know about that, Monica? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica? You know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammered embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? 
that makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost personal feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri, Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that, that I haven't read before. That's a lot of get out of my heads. Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Maya? What's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I I changed my mind. I'm going to see Sayori, so... Ah, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reached Sayori's house and knock on the door. I didn't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Sayori? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, say I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her that I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ear. What I why did I do to her What Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault! My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything that could have that I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more if I just spent more time with her. Walked her to school. I gave her what I know she wanted out of a relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club! Screw the festival! I just lost my best friend. 
Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. Now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Which, by the way, um, if you noticed, it changed something in the files. So let me get there. Browse the files. Happy that's... I believe that's me. Um, photos. Sure. Well, that does that. Sayori is gone! Just going through other things. Oh gosh, that's a lot of stuff. Let's see if I can brighten this. See if there's any hidden things. Um, just light. Brighter. Um, no secrets. it decides to change game more game files nothing in my life is worth more than hers but I still couldn't do what she needed for me and now I can never take it back never 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 Gosh. Doki, Doki. Oh gosh. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air. Like she's totally oblivious to the intention she might draw to herself. The girl is <laughs> my neighborhood my neighbor and childhood friends since we were children. You know, the kind of friend, blah, 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 we used to walk together, but then we stopped. Oh, gosh. The game says no. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend, friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school. I always tell myself it's about time that I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content with just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it. All right, that's all the time I have for today. So. Did I have a save slot here? What did you do to my save? Anyway, I will leave it here for now. And as always, I will see you in the next episode. Stay lucky.